your tools are very sharp. Be careful how you're handling them. They can cut you just like they can cut the wood. When you're cutting, be aware of where your hand that's not holding the tool is. It should be supporting the block and helping guide your hand. It should not be in front of your cutting motion. The knife has a single sharpened angled edge and is used to cut outlines along the edges of forms. It's the primary tool that would be used to cut the thin outlines you see in Japanese prints. Though you may find yourself wanting to hold the knife in a position similar to a pencil or an X-Acto knife, it is best held in the fist. This takes some time to get used to but allows you to cut for longer periods of time without wearing out your hand or your wrist. Generally when you're using the knife, the cutting motion uh, is going to be one where you draw the tool toward you, holding it at an angle so that the knife does not undercut the line or shape that you're following. It's also possible to push the knife through the wood um, using the bottom edge of the blade. Here I'm going to cut a line with the knife and this creates a pre-cut edge to which I can clear out the neighboring material, the negative space. You cut at a, about a 45 degree angle so that you don't undercut that line. Then you take your U-gouge in this case and you cut and clear up to that line and the wood just pops out. Now you can also use the fan chisel to clear out up against these lines. The, both the U-gouge and the fan chisel are used in this way often in combination with the knife. The fan chisel has a single sharpened edge and a slightly curved blade. It's used to clear out and smooth open areas where you have cut and is held in a similar grip to the U-gouge and uses a similar cutting motion. Typically you hold it at an inclined angle and push it forward, skimming through the wood, removing ridges left behind from other tools like the U-gouge. The U-gouge, which comes in a variety of sizes, has a single sharp edge shaped in a curve. They will vary both in width and in the relative curvature or flatness of the U-shape. Uh, if you bought the five-piece set of uh, power grips, you got both a small and a larger U-gouge. Uh, they are a popular tool uh, capable of producing a wide range of marks depending on the size of the tool and again the curvature of the blade. You may note the marks and lines made with the U-gouge will begin and end with a curved rounded point. The cutting motion can be either a skimming or a scooping motion and you may find yourself changing your grip to suit the type of cut you're making. Here you can see the quality of mark that the U-gouge makes. It's a thicker line and does have the rounded entry and exit points at the beginning and ends of the lines. The bigger the gouge, the bigger the mark.
The V gouge has two blades set at a fixed angle. It's something like a mixture of the knife and the U gouge. It's held and uh, used in similar way to the U gouge, um, and you can either skim through the material or you can scoop and you'll adjust your hand grip again according to the types of cuts you're making. It can be used in a variety of ways. Um, it's a very flexible tool in the sense that it can make many types of marks. It can mimic some of the uh, abilities of the knife uh, such as outlining on the edges of, of forms and lines, but it can be used to make a variety of different marks from patterns of, of mark making to long lines. And depending on how deep you insert the tool into the block, you can adjust the width of the lines or the marks that you make. So if you go very, very shallow, you get a very thin line. If you go deeper, you'll get a thicker line. And you can vary this. So it's really a nice tool. It's important to keep your tools sharp, both so that you get good clean cuts, but also because dull tools are actually more dangerous than sharp tools. With a dull tool, you'll tend to overforce, and that will cause you to be more likely to slip and, and cut yourself. So it's important to keep the tools in good shape. Now, while a truly dull tool, or one that's been damaged, needs to be sharpened on a sharpening stone, you can do enough with a piece of leather to maintain a sharp tool. The tools that you bought, if you bought the power grip set, came very sharp. So you'll be able to maintain your tools over the semester with regular use of a leather strop. While you may have bought one of the uh, honing blocks, the leather honing blocks that are sold by McLean's. You can use good belt leather, untanned leather, uh, and if you have access to a metal polishing compound, you can coat the leather with that, though that's not absolutely necessary. Here I have a U gouge. All tools have one side that's sharpened, that's the polished side. You'll lay it face against the leather and just pull backwards towards yourself. Don't push forward, you'll tear up the leather. With the U-gouges, you'll have to rock the tool a bit and tip it up on its sides so that you make sure you get not just the middle of the blade, but the sides as well. Now the process for both the chisel and the knife is pretty much the same. First thing is you want to find the angle of the face of the, of the cutting edge. You do not want to change that, so you want to try to find that angle, and when you go to sharpening or honing, you want to ride at that angle. You can press against the table to feel that angle, and when you feel comfortable with it, move to the leather. What you'll do is lay it face down and then draw backwards, drawing towards yourself. If you go forwards, you're just going to cut the leather. So draw backwards, applying pressure as you go. You might touch up the back side just a hair. Now the V tool much like the knife and the chisel, you need to find that angle and try to travel along with it as you sharpen. 
pull against the leather towards yourself. Then switch sides. Because it has two faces, you need to sharpen both. And you need to give them equal attention. A couple swipes on the inside of the groove can clear out any debris that's in there. 